Welcome to section 5.2, Composite Argument and Linear Combination Properties. At the end of this section, you should be able to answer these questions. How can we relate a linear combination of a sine and cosine function of equal periods to a single cosine function with a phase displacement? How can we demonstrate the relationship between the constants and the relationship graphically? Why does the calculation of the phase displacement require more thought than a simple request from the calculator? What is the composite argument property for cosine of a minus b? How can this relationship help us solve certain equations algebraically? Let's start by looking at a linear combination of sine and cosine, which means adding a cosine function and a sine function of equal periods but with different amplitudes. I've prepared a wind plot file that will allow us to do this quickly and easily. So let's start by looking at the graph of 3 cosine x in degree mode. So here's the equation. 3 cosine x in degrees. We can see it's got an amplitude of 3 and a period of 360 degrees. Now let's take the graph of 4 sine x here in green. Again, you can see the sine function. And it's got an amplitude of 4 and a period of 360. Now we're going to add these two together. Winplot allows us to do that simply under the 2 menu here. We have combinations of functions as an option. And one of the combinations is to add two functions. And here are the two functions I'm going to be adding. 3 cosine x and 4 sine x. And when we add them, we get this picture. I'm going to hide the uh, original two functions so that we can look solely at the combination function. Let's change the color here. Let's make it blue. Here we go. Now, if we look at this function, it appears to be a sinusoid as well. And we can analyze it using the tools of Winplot. Let's look at the extremes here. All right, the first, let's pick the right function to look at. The first extreme occurs at 53 degrees at an amplitude of 5 units, right up here. Our next extreme is down here at the bottom at negative 5 for y and 233.13 degrees for x. And our next extreme is at 413 degrees here. Let's mark that point and let's mark the original high point. If we look over here, we can see that we have an extreme at 53 degrees and another extreme at 413 degrees exactly 360 degrees apart. So the combination sinusoid has the same period as our original sine and cosine graphs. So the big question is, where did the amplitude and the phase displacement of 53 degrees over here come from if we know our original two equations? Okay, we've seen that when we combine a sinusoid, for instance, 3 cosine theta plus 4 sine theta, we end up with another sinusoid. And that sinusoid turned out to be 5 cosine of theta minus a phase displacement of approximately 53.13 degrees. So the question is, where 
do this 5 and this 53.13 come from? Well, the 5 is the amplitude. And if we look at the amplitudes of our original equations, we see that we had an amplitude of 3 and an amplitude of 4, and we ended up with an amplitude of 5. 3, 4, 5. Hopefully, this reminds you of a right triangle with an amplitude of 5 and sides of 3 and 4, because 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. The question is, where do we put the 3 and where do we put the 4? Well, since the 3 is associated with the cosine, and the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, we could put the 3 here and the 4 on the opposite side to go with the sine. That seems to make sense. Now, if that's true, then maybe we could figure out where this 53.13 degrees comes from. Turns out that if we look at this right triangle we've created, if we want to figure out this angle, we would take the inverse tangent or the arc tangent of 4 over 3. What does that turn out to be? Let's pull out the calculator and ask for the inverse tangent of 4 divided by 3. And there it is, our 53.13 degrees. This relationship, or relationships, will hold true for any linear combination of a sine and a cosine graph. We can draw a triangle where the coefficient on the cosine term is our adjacent side, and the coefficient or amplitude of the sine term is our opposite side. And we can find that linear combination by using the amplitude of the cosine graph, the hypotenuse of the triangle as our amplitude, and the included angle as our phase displacement. So here's a summary of what we've learned. When we have a linear combination of a sine and a cosine in the form b cosine x plus c sine x, we can rewrite that linear combination as a single sinusoid in terms of cosine with a new amplitude and a new phase displacement. We get the new amplitude by taking the square root of the square, the sum of the squares of the amplitudes on each of the original functions. And we get the phase displacement by taking the arc tangent of the amplitude on the sine function divided by the amplitude on the cosine function. To determine the quadrant and the actual value for d, the phase displacement, we need to sketch d in standard position. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. For this example, we're going to express linear combination negative 8 cosine theta plus 3 sine theta as a single cosine with a phase displacement. So we take those coefficients or amplitudes and draw our triangle. We have an adjacent side of negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And an opposite side of 3. So this will be our angle theta, or our phase displacement, d. The amplitude here, since this is negative 8 and this is 3, our amplitude would be the square root of negative 8 squared plus 3 squared, or 64 plus 9 the square root of 73, and our d value will be the arctan of 3 over negative 8. Now, 
if I take the arctangent, so second tangent of 3 divided by negative 8, I get a value of negative 20.556 degrees. If I go back to my sketch and I think about an angle of negative 20, that puts me down here in the fourth quadrant. But that's not the angle that allows me to draw the appropriate reference triangle. So I have to apply the arctangent formula and add 180 degrees to get my true value of theta or my true phase displacement. That tells me that my d value is negative 20.556 degrees plus 180 degrees. We get a final equation of root 73 cosine theta minus 159.4439 degrees.